my dudes my guys my freaking boys you gotta do one thing and now you gotta do 18 other things it's always it's always an adventure gonna be working on the element today you know anytime you have to work on the daily it's not a good not a good sign um, we're getting ready for elements on the dragon I hope to see everybody there um, I'm gonna this thing has like 200 something thousand miles on it now I think and uh, all the suspension stuff stock all the bushing stuff is like shot like it's pretty rough um, one of the front control arm bushings is the control arm is literally sliding like in and out of the bushing so I got new control arms and all new struts. And if you've ever done this job, it goes one of two ways. Either everything comes out and is nice and easy peasy, or it's not. Um, any like 2000, like early 2000s, oh, there's a chicken literally right in the woods right there. Anyway, every like early 2000s Civic that I've ever messed with, which has only been like three, um, the rear trailing arm setups on these, like on the older Civics and stuff, they had like a nut and a bolt and um like they would get seized and you just cut the bolt off and it'd be fine this there's not really room for that and it's like a pressed in like i don't even think it's like welded in nut it's like pressed into like the control arm or something like that and uh trying to take this stuff apart i've already knocked two of those loose and they're not supposed to come loose so uh i think we're gonna have to end up using the welder to weld some of those nuts in place hopefully when i weld them it'll heat the nut up and expand it and we'll be able to like get the get the stuff off that's that's all in good hopes though. So this is the main reason why I'm doing this right here. You can see that bushing is like completely out and I got it loose, but that top nut right there that's supposed to not move on the subframe is uh, spinning. So that's not ideal. Uh, so after I had that issue, I was like, ah, maybe I'll just try to knock the back out. And after a lots of kicking the ratchet, and you can see that bolt, I got that one loose. Um, and then this one over here, which is the hard one, if you don't have a lift, um, it is not loose and it is also just spinning the nut. And what I do, this is going to look like a crazy setup. What I do is I take a piece of uh, two by four and I put it right here and then I put the ratchet on it and I ratchet strap the ratchet tight, super tight. And then I smack it with a hammer and that breaks it loose. But this time it just broke the uh, little nut that goes right there. So that's loose now. So like I said, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to tack weld those, at least those two nuts for right now in place and then try to go ahead and uh, break everything loose. So let's break out the welder. Because low key, every suspension job needs a welder, right? Right, right, love it here. All right, we have everything prepped. Now you might be asking yourself, Andy, how are you gonna prep this? I'm not. I'm not. It's gonna weld terrible either way, so we're just gonna gonna go ahead and do a send. Yeah, we're just gonna do a send here. Y'all can say what you want about these uh, Harbor Freight Pittsburgh uh, sockets and uh, ratchets, but uh. This thing's all tore up because of the last one I had to do like this and this one. And it still, still has all the teeth in it. Everything still works as it should. All right, so we got that one out. I think the next course of action should be to try to do the front since this bottom bolt is out and that other side bottom bolt is out. Those are the two hardest ones in my opinion here. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to do the front control arms. Like I said, already th broke the, the nut on the other one is already broke loose. Um, so I'm gonna have to weld that other side too. And that side's a bit rusty. So that should be interesting to say the least. Um, I think I'm gonna try to knock these two loose right now and see how that goes. And then uh, assess the situation from there. So if you guys have like an electric or a air um, impact gun, I would strongly recommend this. It's called a power socket. It's basically just a big beefy socket. Um, they're used mainly for like crank pulley bolts and stuff, but it just adds to the torque. And I know that these are like a pain to get out. So uh, I'm gonna hit it with a power socket. Uh, it's 
not how we want to start today off. All right, so jokes on me. I thought that was gonna be the easy one. Um, it's not. It's not. So what we'll do is find my 19 socket, and I will grab a breaker bar and get angry with it. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I feel like my impact gun isn't as strong as it used to be. It's already been rebuilt, but because I broke it loose pretty easily, even though I'm out of breath, uh, pretty easily with the breaker bar. So now I should just be able to All right, so now I can get this back bolt out. And what my game plan was going to be was going to be to do the strut and the lower control arm separate. That way I can leave everything hooked up to the uh, the knuckle. And basically, you know, if I did the lower control arm first, just pop the new lower control arm in and then do the strut. That way I don't have to like take the whole knuckle out. But I don't think that's going to work here. I think what I'm, what I'll try to do, I guess, is try to pull the strut out. And then after I have the strut out, maybe I'll have enough room to like move stuff around and be able to get to that bolt better and get more leverage on it. Um, I don't think it's going to be the case, but I guess I'll go ahead and just rip the strut out of here real quick. Um, so it's basically just a couple bolts in your uh, interview. I'll show you that in a second. It's going to be this guy right here, which I think looks like a 17. It's either going to be a 17 or 19. Uh, these two right here, going to have to undo. There's a 10 right here. Um, this should be in there it's not uh, and then that should be able to come out so one two three four five six so it should be just six bolts one two three four five six seven seven bolts and that i should be able to take this strut out then maybe this will fold down some and i'll be able to get in here with this better and uh see if we can manhandle it down this is the engine bay these are the three bolts you got to take out one two and three Alright, now that I have my strut out of the way, I can get to this bolt right there a little bit easier. So, let's see if we can get it loose with the pry bar now. Alright, we got it loose. So before I take this all the way out, because I don't want it to fall out, um, I need to undo the ball joint on the bottom and the sway bar in link. So I'm going to leave that halfway out and take care of those now. Alright, I got the sway bar in link out right there. And this is starting to like sag pretty bad and I don't want it to pull on the axle too much. So what I'm going to do is throw the new strut in and then bolt it up here and then do the bottom half. That way something's holding all this up and it's not putting a lot of stress on the axle and everything else. All right, we got our new strut in, everything is loose. So we're just having it in right now just to hold everything in place. But all the bolts are in, everything's loose. So now we can try to break this uh, bottom ball joint out. And there's um, there's different ways to do that. Um, the way that I normally do it is, there's your ball joint right there. Of course, it's just gonna be in a huge shadow. Um, there's your ball joint. I normally take the cotter pin out, break the nut loose, but not take it off, and then hit the lower control arm and it'll pop it out. So that's the way I do it. That way you don't have to use a splitter or anything. <clears throat> so whenever that doesn't work, go ahead and grab your pickle fork, a.k.a. your ball joint splitter, a.k.a. I now need new ball joints because it's going to break them. Put that on in there. Did it pop it loose? Nope. And start whirling on that thing. I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. Alright, so got the lower control arm out. And then notice that my ball joint had a lot of play in it. And uh, that's chunks of the ball joint. And... Um, I would say we're not putting this back together with this ball joint in there. 
So I guess I actually have to pull the spindle apart, which is not something I wanted to do today. Uh, but needs to get done. So this is what happens. You know what I mean? These older cars, you know, got a ton of miles on them. So you got to do one thing and now you got to do 18 other things. So before I do that, before I pull that one apart, I'll pull this side apart, um, the driver's side apart, and figure out if this side needs it too, because if this side needs it too, might as well just do both of them at the same time, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I probably should just do both of them at the same time either way, so. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and rip this lower control arm out and rip all this stuff apart and go get ball joints. The only bad part is I don't have like a ball joint press, and um, so I gotta take it to like a shop to get it pressed in. So that is the downside, but we'll figure it out. I forgot this other side, the, <clears throat> the nut is loose like it did on the back um, for the back strut. So I have to weld that nut in place and see if I can get everything taken apart. Um, also, shout out to all the mechanics out there. This is why I can't be a mechanic. It's like one of those jobs where it's like, oh yeah, this will be easy peasy. This will be a breeze and then the opposite of easy peasy super opposite of easy peasy so like one job turns into oh yeah we can't put this back together now we gotta run out for parts and <coughs> the pollen's killing me <coughs> um so yeah shout out to all the all the actual mechanics out there i don't know how y'all do this for a living i can do it i'm physically like met or like i have all the skill set to be able to do it but Nah, this ain't for me, boss. So, yep, gonna start working on this guy now. I right, ignore the porosity on that weld, but weld it on there, and it's coming out. So, we take those, we take those wins. So, now I can rip all this stuff out and then go try to find some ball joints. All right, I have everything out. I'm gonna go wash my hands and figure out what car I'm gonna take because I just had my two cars detailed and I know I'm covered in stuff. But, uh, yeah. So this is the ball joint on the other side. I just went ahead and used the ball joint splitter. That's why it's all greasy. But as you can see, see how it like goes back into place and has some resistance when you do this and doesn't go in and out. This is the one on the other side. I was apparently trying to die. <laughs> so um, I just hit my buddy up. Uh, if I can find some uh, ball joints, he said he can press them in for me today. So I'm gonna go try to do that. This is the reason why I was doing everything. Was this, you can see the bushings like, yeah, there you go. Bushing uh, basically is just in there for a pretend. So, I have new control arms and all that stuff. Now the hard part's done. All the hard bolts to break have already broken loose. So I think the other hard part is gonna be getting the driver's side strut out because there's like an evap box on the way. So I'll have to fight that, but we'll go do this for right now been driving the wagon around because at honda day i had like no gas and the local gas station only has 91 or 92 or something like that this thing's tuned on 93 and it's pretty turned up it's a pretty rowdy tune so i haven't been able to really get into it so uh luckily now i can throw some 93 in it sent somewhere else and uh, apparently whoever had it before they sent it back just took the little c-ring that holds the ball joint place they took that so uh, now I'm at another advance and I'm gonna see if I know this place has one in stock so I'm hoping the one that they have is a complete kit and I'll just return this one and grab that one because this one's missing parts so uh, cross your fingers it's always it's always an adventure then my buddy has like a tool to do this stuff and it blew the ball joint apart instead of like taking it out is i can't be a mechanic bro this is why i'm a welder all right we're back at the house uh i have everything in here i'm gonna slap everything back together as quickly as possible so i'm not gonna film it um 
I'll film the when we go to the backs, but it's about to start downpouring and like the front of this thing's like half outside. So uh yeah, I'm just gonna slam this together back real quick and then I'll get up with y'all when we start doing the rear. It didn't beat the rain, but we have the garage door closed now. And both of the fronts are all together. So we got our brand new strut and brand new lower control arms. Um, brand new ball joints and the other side has a brand new uh, sway bar and link. This one's still fine. So now that the fronts are done, it's time to do the backs. I don't know which one I should do first. Definitely the passenger side is way easier than the driver's side to get this strut out because the, the other side has like a little evap canister in it and it's all up in the way. So um, I know Dana just did one of these and he had issues with the same thing. And the one I parted out, I had issues with the same thing. But that evap box right there is uh, all up in the way because this looks like it would be like bolted in here, right? It bolts in way up here. So it has to drop very far to get out of there. But we're gonna go ahead and try to get these backs out now. All right, so if you remember, we already got the bottom bolts out. Now we just have to do the tops. So the easiest way to do this is to fold your seats up and this is the panel you want to take a little divot right there pop that bad boy out like that and now you can get the bolts are right down in there terrible lighting there you go so you just take those out but you can see how tall this thing is so all that has to drop out the bottom so that's why it's kind of a pain but we'll go ahead and knock these loose these look like the factory 14s uh the front suspension on well mine in particular were 15 i think they're probably had aftermarket struts in it already these look like OEM struts. So what I'm hoping to do, the whole reason I'm doing all this is uh, that uh, the driver's side front control arm, the bushing was gone. I could have just done the bushing, but I was like, eh, we'll just throw the whole control arm in it. Um, and then I hate this thing sags in the back so much and it drives me bonkers. So uh, I figured I would try to do the struts in the back. And I was like, well, if I do the struts in the back, I might as well do the struts in the front. And then this, now we're here. Now we're here. All right, so now we have these things loose. Just gonna go ahead and all right we're just gonna take the handy dandy pry bar because i never pried it out of its place and maybe if we can get it down in there like that wow it's out of there so you can see this was definitely a northern car the inside of the car Great. The outside of the car, not so great. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, this part is significantly easier with two people. Um, if you have a friend or someone who can help you, uh, for sure, put the strut up in first and get them to tighten the nuts down on the top and then kind of just swivel the bottom in. I don't have that option. I'm here by myself, as always. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get it up in and then like shove it in place and hope it'll stay long enough for me to do the top. All right, so the top of the strut is mounted in, and now we just have to slide the bottom in and put a bolt in it. And I'm kind of happy because it looks like it needs this needs to go down, which means it'll raise the car up, which is what I was looking for. So hopefully that is the case. But uh, yes, yeah, so now basically I'm just gonna pull this in, and then I'm gonna have to push this down and put the get the bolt started, and then run the bolt in there. And before I do this, I'm gonna put some grease on it because. Uh, this thing has seen some stuff and it was a pain to get out. All right, so we got our new strut in. You can see the bolts in down there. I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, yeah, so I couldn't do this by myself. Just a uh, heads up on that. I had to get my mom out here and she stood on the, uh, on that, um, on the wheel studs and pushed it down and that stretched it out a lot. So I'm very, very curious to see how much higher this is gonna sit in the back. Because she was standing on it and I had a pry bar down through here like this and was pulling down on it too. So should definitely be a lot taller. No more saggy butt hopefully. Now time to do the hard side. Alright, so we've gotten to the hard part now. Um, so this strut will not come out because of that evap box. There's like no way to like finagle it or whatever. So what I've seen Dana and Herb's Element, shout out to them dudes, uh, they both have YouTube channels. Um, they took this off, but these bolts are super crusty on mine, so I'd rather not do that. And I know the bushings are shot, so I know if I start trying to take that out, it's going to be a whole other thing. I'm not trying to deal with that right now, 
So the other option I have is I could drop these two bolts out and try to swing it out a little bit, which that'll be my backup plan. Um, what I'm gonna do, I think there's only three bolts to hold this evap canister up. There's one there, there's one right there, and there's one on the far side. I think I'm just gonna try to like pop those out. Um, it might even just have, I'm looking at the top of it, there's like a bolt here and a bolt here. So I wonder if the bottom side of it just has through bolts. It might. It's got a hole in there. I don't know. I'm going to try to figure out how to take this evap canister out, and I will report back. Because if we could just drop that down, that would save so much time. And then just basically just drop it down and slide it out of the way, and then slide this down and slide that back up. Done. Um, maybe I'll try that. I'll see if I can see up through there. All right, I'll report back after I figure this out. All right, so I'm not going to lie to y'all. That is definitely the way to do it. It's just in two 10 millimeter bolts that go up in there, and it you can see it's just flimsy. So you can kind of just push it out of the way, and that strut just fell right out nice and beautiful. So now we'll go ahead and slap the other one in, slap the, uh, the, the EVAP box back up, and then we're almost done. All right, there it is, back on the ground. No more saggy butt. I'm so happy about that. I'm sure it'll probably settle down, like, you know, after... Uh, after I drive it some and stuff like that, but it's raining. But yeah, it seems pretty level. Everything seems tight. It definitely raised it up. Like I have a lift sitting right here. And I was debating whether I want to do that or not, but I'm kind of happy with how it is now. It definitely raised it a bunch. I'm curious to see if it messed the alignment up at all with it raising up. So we'll go drive it and see how it wants to act. Let's get it. All right, so there it is. No more saggy butt, and everything rides pretty good. There's no more clunks in the front end. So, uh, yeah, I think we're we're done here. Uh, I just took it on this back road that's back here. Um, it's just, like, really potholy and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, this is the spot to test it, I guess. If it was going to break, it would have broke. Um, so, yeah, I guess now all I got to do really is change the oil, and I might put a new radiator in because this one's kind of crusty looking. So, and then we'll be ready for Elements on the Dragon. Let me know what you guys think. Y'all want to see some more Element content? Let me know. See you.